I can't wait to wear a crown and sit on God's throne someday. I'm going to sit on God's throne someday. Is that blasphemy? Is that heresy? I knew this church tossed some weird stuff. I'm going to wear a crown and sit on God's throne someday. How many believe that? How many are like, yeah, I don't know. Is this guy trapping me? What's going on here? Well, I'm glad you asked where I can validate that with Scripture because everything we do needs to be validated with Scripture. Listen, we're not going to be off in some weird stuff that you can't validate with Scripture. We got to make sure it's lined up with God's Scripture. Everything today is going to be having Scripture backed up to it. I'm going to go fast. I'm going to go hard. I want you to take notes. Please, this message is going to equip and empower you. My prayer for today's message is that the Holy Spirit is going to unlock and unleash tools. The tools of the cross, the victory that happened at this, and how many of you guys know that there is more that took place on the cross than just your forgiveness? There is a power to be unleashed on the cross. We're going to get into that today, and the cross don't play. Revelation 3, 21, New King James Version says, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. So are we going to overcome? Are we going to overcome? We got to overcome, you guys. There is some overcoming that needs to happen. How many guys are in the midst of trying to overcome right now something? Everybody, we're in the midst of trying to overcome something, but we are going to overcome, and today's message will empower you to go to that next level of overcoming. So to him who overcomes, this is Jesus talking, I will grant with me to sit on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. James 1.12 says, blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Sounds like I'm going to overcome and sit down on a throne. I'm going to endure temptation and get a crown of life and sit with the king on his throne in heaven someday. Praise God. Welcome to the message. It's called triumphant over temptation. Is anyone perfect in this room? And can, they have, say, can anyone say they have no sin? No. So this message is for you. Amen. Amen. This message is for you, not your neighbor. And this message is probably more for your neighbor than you, but it is for you too, okay? <laughs> so years ago, anytime, anytime a man of God shares a story where they kind of had a little bit of stumble or a fall, you got to preface it with years ago, right? I can't tell you the stumbles and falls recently because then you just get discredited. So you got to talk about the stumbles and falls years ago. So years ago, (laughs) I lost a battle on the internet late at night. Anybody lose those battles ever? Raise your hand so you just feel humiliated like I do right now. (laughs) I've lost, I lost that battle. My five-year-old daughter comes to me the next morning, said, dad, I had a dream that you let in our house a bunch of flying bears and they were stinging all of us. Didn't take long for you to get the interpretation of that dream. (laughs) Me as the head, me as the protector, me as the man of God that needs to endure temptation so I get that crown of life. I didn't endure that temptation. And I opened up a spiritual realm and allowed, you know, allowed stinging bears to come in and begin to harass. The Bible says that stuff that we don't drive out of our hearts and souls and win the battle on, guess what? It becomes stings and, and sores and it can come in and attack you. And I just want to, I just want to talk to my friends today that what kind of stinging bears are you allowing to come in and wreak havoc in your life because you're not winning the battle of temptation? I want to equip and empower our church to be able to win those battles and show you that there is great, exceedingly great and precious promises by which we can escape the corruption in the world through lust. We can escape these things. We can win the battle on this. Amen. Amen. Now, I ain't trying to hit anyone over the head with this message, but I hope the Holy Ghost does. <laughs> types of temptation. Let's get into the types of temptation. I'm going to read these quick. Sex, drugs, alcohol, temptation to lie, temptation to cheat and steal, temptation to quit church, quit God, quit your marriage, quit your diet, quit the gym, temptation to gossip or slander, or have an ear for gossip and slander, temptation to be offended, temptation to isolate, temptation to rage, temptation to be prideful, brag, and boast. 
You know, a lot, some of those things are outwardly, inwardly, temptation to be critical of people, temptation to be judgmental, temptation to look narrowly at people. These are some of the inward things. Temptation to get revenge, temptation to fight, temptation to not mind your own business, temptation to go back like Peter went back fishing after Jesus died. Temptation to murder, temptation for food. How many of you guys know uh, if you get ready for a message, you should probably fast a little bit? Amen. Well, this week, my brother Aaron back here that works with me can vouch for it. And last week, I'm fasting and getting ready for the message. Guess what the Hanford crew decides to do? Big feed. They don't call it the Hanford tumor for nothing. And it ain't, it ain't from radiation. It's because you get slow and there's a lot of eating that happens. To get back to my, say my desk is back there. There's a table this long, full of food. Right, Aaron? Okay. <laughs> Three days in a row. Temptation for food. How many guys? There's a temptation for food. There's, there's a battle for food in, in a lot of people's lives. Temptation for laziness. I'm not lazy. Okay, Netflix binger. Temptation to hide behind your wife. Temptation to love the things of this world. The Bible says if you love the things of this world, the love of the Father's not in you. Temptation to live naturally. I'm going to talk about living supernaturally today, but you can live naturally. You know, people like, I just like to call it like it is. I, I, I tell it straight. The Bible says that we're supposed to call the things that aren't as though they're not, right? When the, when the 12 spies went into the land of Canaan, 10 came back and told the truth. There's giants in the land. Was that true? Was it true? Absolutely. They told the truth. We're like grasshoppers. They were probably really small in the giant site, Right? They told the truth, and God called that an evil report. Joshua and Caleb told what God said. Today, I want us to be a church that says what God says about our issues. You have to get promises from the Word of God and begin to fight this fight. Listen, you know, it's one thing to be excited and hyped during worship, but it's another thing to when you are facing an inward battle in your heart and soul that maybe only you know about, that you begin to learn the power of the cross, you begin to learn the power of the scriptures, you begin to learn what God has in store for those who he has called out of this world. Amen. I'm going to bring a little clarity on temptation before we get into it hard. James 1, 12 through 15. James chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. Note makers or history takers. And if you guys want, there's a, on the Bible app, you can actually go on the Bible app. It might be hard to see. You can go to the homepage. You can go to the homepage, click events. And you can pull up all of my notes for this entire thing, and you could add notes to it and read and follow along. It's a great tool for anybody that has a Holy Bible app. So get on there, figure out how to get into the events and follow along with the notes and save them and edit them and add stuff to them as the Holy Spirit speaks to you. So James 1, 12 through 15, blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord promised to those who love him. We talked about that already. We're getting that crown of life. Let no one say, and this is where a lot of people make mistakes. Oh, the Lord's tempting me. Oh, God put this in my path for me. This is what the Lord says about that. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. God, I love you. You're the best. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for who you are. What's in the box? Lord, I love you. Anybody wondering what's in the box? See, there's something in you that's drawn you away already, right? There's something in us a lot of times that can draw us away from God, right? And that's our own desires that draws us away from God, right? And then what does it say here? It says, when that desire has conceived, so I come over here and I, I have a little conception with this. When desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, but it's just cute. It's just a little baby sin. It's not that big of a deal. I made a small mistake. It's just a little crack. It's just a little marijuana. It's just a little, 
alcohol. It's just a little racy Netflix series. When desire gives, is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when we begin to just say, that's not that big of a deal and begin to live with it, it's kind of cute. It's a baby. And we begin to feed that and it gets grown up. What what happens when sin is full grown? It gives birth to what? Death. The problem is we're opening this box. We're giving birth to sin in our lives and it's bringing forth death in a lot of areas of our lives. It brings forth death in the marriage, death in your passion, death in your love for God, death in your finances. It could, you open the door to stinging bears. Who knows what they're stinging? Who knows what kind of poison and infection they're bringing into our lives? We cannot open the box. We, so I, w- I want to bring a little clarity real fast. When we're in love with God and something has drawn us away to that box, I want us to begin to realize, is there something in me that maybe needs sanctified? Is there something in me that needs to go to a new level with God? Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, thank you for showing this to me, God. I don't want to have this in my life. Amen? You're never going to get victory over a sin that you secretly like. And how do you not like sin? You beg God to change your mind, change your heart. You get scriptures that begin to fight against those things that are warring against your soul and pulling you away from bearing fruit for God. We are called to bear fruit for God in a supernatural way. And if we're not, there's what's in the box. You want to see what many of your uh, new boyfriends and girlfriends look like? Here we go. So say you're not falling for the black box. What does the enemy do? Let's put it in a nice box. It's a nice new car. I can't afford it, but hey, the temptation's there. I'm drawn away by the things of this world. Oh, hey, she's a beautiful girl. She loves God. He's a handsome stallion like my wife got. (laughs) What's up? I tricked her. She got into the box, found there was a heart for God, but... How many of you guys know we all have a little something in our hearts that's drawing us away from the kingdom of heaven? We're coming after these things today in the house of God. Listen, daddy ain't playing today. <laughs> We're coming after these things in the house of God today. I don't want these things to be hindering your life anymore. This message is motivated by love. I care about you. I care about your family. I care about the kingdom of heaven most of all. And I want to see the power of God operating in your life in a new way. We got to get to the place to where this ain't just hype. And I'm not saying it's hype, but maybe you're hype. I'm not saying everybody's hype, but some people might be hype. The hype is going to wear off and you're going to have to figure out how to dismantle these temptations and how to get breakthrough and lasting victory in certain areas. We're not called to go up and down as Christians all the time. We're called to be steady and on fire for God and moving towards holiness and righteousness and being pure before him. Amen. As a vessel sanctified for the master's good use. Second Timothy 2.22. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lusts. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call upon the Lord with a pure heart. I want you guys to know today that your temptations are not catching God off guard. We're worshiping up here. We're all fired up. There's something in our heart that's drawn to this box. There's something in our heart that's pulling us away from God. There's something in our heart that's like, well, you know, I want to serve God with all my heart, but. And God's up here looking down saying, I love you. You're doing a great job worshiping me, but you got to learn to start dealing with some of the things that are in your heart or you're always going to be what? Pulled away and fall. Is this speaking to anybody today? Okay, good. I'm not getting a lot of, hey, man, pastor, I don't need that. Listen, I'm coming after, I'm coming after things that make, make, make feel people feel uncomfortable, but I want you to stand before God someday in the way that he intended you to be. Amen. Amen. Change starts with a realization of a weakness within myself. Change starts when, and deception is dismantled with revelation and knowledge. Amen. The enemy usually needs a legal right.
to get involved in your life and wreak havoc. And he plays on our, the weaknesses of our flesh. He plays on the weaknesses of our mind. He plays on areas where maybe you're lonely and maybe you're defeated. Maybe you're broke and it's just easy to not, not feel hope. Do you guys think that maybe God has put some scriptures in his word that give us victory, that if we would use and exercise and know the power, is there power in God's word or not? There's power in his word. But a lot of times we're not seeing the power of that word in our life because it's like exercise. How many of you guys know if you don't exercise, you're not going to see the benefit of it? If we're not exercising some of the scriptures of power of, in God that he has for our life, we're not going to see the victory. We need to get God's word involved and exercise. And people are like, I exercise. My demons are exercising all the time in my head. <laughs> we're not trying to exercise your demons. We're trying to get them out, right? We're trying to exercise and use God's word in our life to move forward in boldness and power and victory for our lives. Oh, I wish there was some kind of scripture in the Bible about the son of God coming to dismantle and destroy the works of the devil. But there is. There are certain principles and certain powers in God's word that if we began to utilize and exercise those, those scriptures, we would see the victory of God in our lives. But first, let's get into some of the enemies of temptation. Enemies of temptation, number one, victimhood. How are you ever going to get a victory over your temptation if you can excuse it by being a victim? Amen? Well, I'm just not getting this, that, and the other, so the box is here. Well, I'm not feeling the presence of God, and woe is me, or I'm hopeless, and well, 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 might as well go to this. Or I'm broke, and what's the use? If we act like victims, we're going to fall to temptation all the time. We cannot have, Christ has made us more than conquerors. We're supposed to be victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen. That is what he has called us to be. Another thing, minimizing sin. That's, that's going to be a big problem. If you take this baby, I'll be like, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. Listen, you know, and we're minimizing sin. We're going to fall into that temptation all the time. It's not too bad, right? A lack of repentance is the last one. If you have a lack of repentance and you're not willing to just get broken before the Lord and, and cry out for mercy for your sin and cry out, create in me a clean heart, oh God, a renewed steadfast spirit within me. If you're not like Psalm 51, how many are you acquainted with Psalm chapter 51 in this room? If you're not, maybe check it out. It's where King David wrote an entire psalm after he committed adultery with Bathsheba and realized that he had sinned against the Lord. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 is the most famous scripture, typically, on temptation. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. What's that mean? Any temptation you're facing, same thing everybody else is facing. Any temptation. Listen, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with that temptation, we'll make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. So the excuse for falling into temptation has been, just disma has been dismantled right now, right? Is God faithful? Yes or no? Then do we have to open the box, church? Do we have to do this? No, you don't have to do it. You do not have to do it. You do not have to allow stinging, flying bears and bees and demonic activity to come into your life. You don't have to do it. You don't have to let your flesh dominate who you are. As a man or woman of God, you don't have to do it. Second Peter 2.9 says, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. That's a small paraphrase, but the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of their temptations. I wrote this down, a perfect response when temptations arise using those two scriptures. Anytime I'm trying to face a battle, anytime I'm in the midst of a storm, I got to get scriptures and I got to put a few together sometimes and come at the enemy and attack. Perfect answer for temptation. God is faithful, right? 
Thank you for showing this to me. I draw near to you, Father. You're the one I want. You deserve the sacrifice of my fight. You're worth battling for. I want you instead. I repent, Father, for whatever unholy desire still lingers within me. I will endure it. I will bear it. You are faithful, and you will deliver me. Amen? Uh, That's too hard. It's too hard to get a couple scripts. This box is instantly feel good. We got to get over the instant fix, the quick fix. As Christians, we got to learn to fight and bear, endure. We got to learn to run from youthful lusts. But I want to get in, I want to get in a little bit to fighting. Amen. What if some temptations were viewed as an opportunity to learn warfare and understand the power of God? Amen. What if some of those temptations were so you could get the victory? Shout out Sam Fiorito. Let's talk about fighting for a moment. Judges chapter 3, verses 1 through 2 and 4. These are the nations that the Lord left in the land to test the Israelites who had not experienced the wars of Canaan. He did this to teach warfare to the generations of Israelites who had no experience in battle. Verse 4. These people were left to test the Israelites to see whether they would obey the commands the Lord had given to their ancestors through Moses. We get born again, get a new clean spirit. How many guys know there's still stuff in your soul that wars against that clean spirit? There's still stuff in our soul that has drawn you away from your marriage, that has drawn you away from the call and the victory and the power of God in your life. There's still stuff in our soul that we have to conquer. So let's talk about it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. How many of you guys know this isn't just a flesh and blood fight that we're up against? Now, the enemy plays on your flesh and the sinful nature of your flesh, but this isn't just a uh, fleshly battle that we're up against. For we do not just wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That is what we wrestle against. Amen? Now, since I like to feel important, let's go to the Greek and figure out what that word wrestle means. What does that word wrestle mean? Well, that word wrestle means a contest between two in which each endeavors to throw the other, and which is decided when the victor is able to hold his opponent down with his hand upon his neck. That's what that word implies. And the term is transferred to the Christians, your guys' struggle with the power of evil. How do I get my hand on the neck of the enemy? How do I get my hand on the neck of the things that are robbing from my family, robbing from their destiny? How do I get my hand on his neck? We got to find and enforce and speak scriptures about the finished work of the cross. That all serpent, the devil, the Satan, that liar is dismantled and dethroned by that. Gosh, if there was only a scripture, if there was only a scripture talking about what the power of the cross brought to believers. How many guys know believers. this isn't just a flood. How many guys know? You can know this, but you got to believe it. You can understand I've heard that. There's a big difference between I've heard that and I'm living that. And I want to empower and equip everyone here today to live this scripture. Go with me, Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. You know, Jesus says, the enemy comes and he has nothing in me. Right? Here we got Jesus right here. The devil comes, takes a swipe, goes right through him. He had nothing in him. Colossians chapter 2, 14 and 15, New King James Version. says, having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he, Jesus, has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed what? Principalities and what? What did we wrestle against? Principalities and powers. What did he disarm? Principalities and powers. What did we wrestle against? Prince, you guys getting a point? Somewhere around the cross, the principalities and powers that you're fighting against and these demonic entities, they have been disarmed, right? 
taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. The enemy's powers have been disarmed. But if you don't know this, and if you're not walking in this, and, 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 and we're in entry-level Christianity, the enemy's going to take advantage. There's going to be a box every day to pull you away from the kingdom of heaven. There's going to be temptations that rise up in your soul that are driving you away. We don't want that. I care about you guys. I want to see legitimate, true, the power of God operate in your life. I love you so much. I want to see victory. I want to see everybody walking in here being like, that message was straight fire. I got, I got victory over this. I enforce the power of the cross. Let's go to Romans 8.3. Romans 8, 3 says, the law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. So what happened? The powers of darkness, principalities and powers were disarmed right here. And and sin's control was claimed had to have an end right here on the cross. Sin's control ended at that cross and the powers that we wrestle against were dismantled at that cross. How many of you guys know we need to enforce the cross and the death that happened there over the personal battles and stuff in our heart and soul? God is wanting to teach some people in this place warfare. He left that in your life to teach you warfare, Right? We got to be people of war. My favorite scripture in Exodus says, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. We got to get to a point to where we are operating in the true power of God. You know, a lot of times the temptations start in your mind. Second Corinthians 10, three through five has a great answer for that. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. So here again, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're not walking in the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't wrestle. We, right? we don't wrestle according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. What's the word carnal mean? Fleshly. They're not fleshly, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, right? What's a stronghold? It's an area in your heart and soul that the enemy has been able to get, get his foot in the door. In the Old Testament, a city would be walled with a big, tall wall, and the enemy would find an area that was a weak link in that wall. They'd climb over, and then they would set up a stronghold in that area to where um, it was fortified, right? And anybody that came to it, the, the enemy was able to stab and jab, but they would run raids from that stronghold into the rest of the city. If we look at that city like our soul and the enemy has jumped over the wall somewhere in your soul or there's a stronghold in your soul and the enemy is able to have a little buildup where he can run and, and, and poke other areas of your soul because he has a stronghold where the word of God says that our weapons are uh, carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of those strongholds, right? Casting down arguments and every high thing. We got high things that try to exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ in our hearts and souls. That's why it's a battle, you guys. That's why it's a fight. There are, there are things that we are fighting in the secret place. I'm, I'm trying to inv invade your personal space a little bit today. Get down in that heart and soul. Lastly, it says to bring in every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. I got some legit handcuffs here, right? From John Lamar. He gave me the key, too, just in case I get trapped up here. I would just, you know, I'm not putting them on. I'm not even going to risk it, okay? But I do have a key. So we For have the weapons these demonic of our powers trying to come against us. We have a, it says to take them captive. How many of you guys heard? Take those thoughts captive before. Raise your hand if you've heard that. Take those thoughts captive. Take them captive. Take them captive. Well, what do you do with all the captive thoughts? It says take them captive to the obedience of Christ, Right? What's the obedience of Christ? Oh, man, I'm so glad. You guys are on fire today asking all the right questions. <laughs> Philippians 2.8. 2, Philippians 2.8 talks about what the obedience of Christ is. And being found in an appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. 
So many times we'll take these caps thought, these thoughts captive and we're wrestling against them and they're all going around. We got to take these thoughts to the obedience of Christ to where it says what? He put an end to sin's control over us. He, he dismantled the powers of darkness. He disarmed those principalities and powers at the cross. I'm not trying to take thoughts captive and just have them around with me all day. I'm trying to take the thoughts captive to the place where they're going to die. Those thoughts, whatever's going on in your mental game needs to die. And you can't kill it. You can't kill it. You know who did kill it? Have you guys ever heard the term, we fight from victory, not for victory? Where are we fighting from? Where's our position? Our position is the cross. This right here said, God put an end to sin's control over us right here. God defeated and dismantled and disarmed the powers of principalities and powers. The very things that we wrestle against, if we would just start taking them to the cross, boom, they would be snuffed out. This is where they die right here. But if we don't exercise it, we're going to see that. What do you do with that information? Well, I'll tell you what we do with that information. We let, we, the enemy needs to know you come around, there's going to be problems. You, you come around my family, I'm not just taking you captive and keeping you around. You come around me or something draws my heart away from you, I'm not just picking up this box. The enemy needs to know you come around, you mess around, it's going to get messy. I want the enemy and I, I want to be known in the spiritual realm more than this realm. I want it to be known like, you know, say a couple of little punk demons go up to the big homie. They're like, let's go attack Austin. They're like, nah, dog. Nah, bro. He knows about that cross. Go ahead. <laughs> go find out what happens. You know, I, I want us to be like, hey, I want, the, I want this spiritual realm to know. You come around. We're fighting. Let it be known that you fight. Let it be known in the spiritual realm. You're walking in authority with wisdom and revelation, knowledge and understanding. You know what the cross did. You know that stuff's disarmed. You know that the, that the things in your flesh that want to try to stay alive, God put an end to sin's control over you on that cross. You got to know these things or you're going to live a miserable Christian life. You're going to hear about all the testimonies. You're going to hear about all the love. You're going to see people walking in power. You're going to have brothers and sisters rising above before you and it's going to be hopeless. Let it be seen that you fight. Amen. What a great way to honor God right here. Can you imagine the father looking down and seeing Rudy? Rudy spent a time at that cross. Maybe there's something trying to draw him away, but Rudy is enforcing the power of Jesus Christ on that cross. Sister Ann back there knows about this scripture. Enforcing the power of the cross over these things that are trying to break us and, and hurt us, right? Let it be seen that you fight. Let it be seen. What a way, great way. God's looking down. These people know what's up. I, I watched my son die on that cross and Crystal... She's enforcing that. Thank God somebody's utilizing the power here. Thank God somebody's getting it. What, do you, what a way to honor God. Hey, man. Can everyone stand with me, please? <laughs>